Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is Luke chapter 12, verses 13 through 24. The Reverend Brian Heller is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. A reading from Mark chapter 12. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge, arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care, and be on your guard against all covetousness. One's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, What shall I do, for I have nowhere to store my crops? And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself, and is not rich towards God. And he said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, and neither sow nor reap, they either have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. This is the word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What if? You know these questions probably all too well. What if I lose my job? What if my child or grandchild never speaks to me again? What if my spouse doesn't love me anymore? What if I lose my car, house? Indeed, what if I lose everything? We've all dealt with these what-if questions in one way or another. Maybe their questions are lurking in the back of your mind, or maybe they are right there, bold, front and center, and it seems like you can't think about anything else. Let's face it, anxiety and fear, these emotions that drive these what-if questions, are very real things. So much that the Lord brings these topics up often, in his word to us. Time and time again, Jesus will tell his own disciples, do not fear. Still, fear and anxiety are common emotions for us. Why? Because in this world, there does seem to be a lot to be afraid of. You do not know what tomorrow will bring, let alone today. So what are those worries, those fears, those anxieties that keep you up at night? What are those worst-case scenarios that haunt you maybe even at this moment? What are those cares and fears that keep your mind racing from one potential catastrophic ending to the next, where there doesn't seem to be any hope in sight? Their brothers and sisters in Christ, yes, anxiety and fear are common emotions for us to have, yet, what do we do and where do we go when these anxieties and these fears harass us? Who do we turn to? As a faithful pastor once said, the opposite of trust is control. What are those things that we try to gain control over so that these situations maybe seem a little less worrisome. What are those things that we put our trust in? In our reading for today, the person in the crowd turned to an inheritance, demanding that Jesus tell his brother to give him more of what had become an idol. Now it's easy for us to scoff at this guy and his ridiculous requests. But how often are we guilty of the same thing? 
Don't we simply believe that building bigger barns, earning more money, using your own craftiness and zeal will bring us safety and security in this life? That these things will bring us freedom from any anxiety and any worry. But as our Lord tells us, these idols will always fail us. The comfort they bring is fleeting, and the peace that they promise to bring you is no peace at all for your anxious and troubled hearts. These idols steer us away from the real reason that we do have anxiety and fear. We have these things because we are sinners, and because we are sinners, we have doubts. In our sinful nature, we doubt that God will truly care for us, and that he will provide for our every need. We doubt that our Heavenly Father will give us our daily bread. Yes, as Christians gathered here this morning, we are familiar with the salvation story, know it inside and out. We know Christ was crucified for the forgiveness of our sins. But yet, our sinful self is tempted to think, yes, Jesus is all well and good, my sins are forgiven, but today I have real problems, I have real fears, I have real worries. Will you take care of those too? As Christians, our lives are lives of repentance. We are called to repent of doubting that God will provide for us. Be assured this morning that Christ does take care of all things. That all of his care for you does indeed flow out of his love and his mercy. The love and mercy shown to you in his death and resurrection. He assures you, yes, your sins are forgiven. And yes, you will receive your daily bread. He will provide for your every need. Christ himself tells his disciples and us to look at the ravens as an example of God caring for his creation. Do the ravens have anxiety and worries about where their next meal will come from? No. God provides every meal for them, and how much more does he do so with you? Because you are his dear and precious child, baptized into his most holy name. Yes, God is creator of the universe. He is sovereign and almighty. But it's not, that does not mean he doesn't care about the finer details. He cares about the birds, the flowers. He cares about you. This is exactly why Christ goes to the cross. To bear your doubts, your anxiety, your fears. To bear all of your sins upon himself. To die in your stead. And Christ, your Savior and Redeemer, comes to you this day in the ways he has promised through his word and through his sacraments. No matter how you may feel, no matter how anxious you may be, no matter how doubting your heart has been, Christ comes to answer with certainty every what-if question that may be floating in your minds. What if I lose my job? Christ says, you still have me. What if I lose my barns, my inheritance, my relationship with my child, my parents, my grandchildren? What if I lose everything I have? Christ says, you still have me. He is all that you need. He will take care of you, both body and soul. Trust that Christ will give you your daily bread. Just as he cares for the birds, the air, and the flowers of the earth, how much more does he care for you? Christ says, my beloved child, I know it all. I face every temptation you have faced. I've known every anxiety that plagues you this day. You are not alone. Indeed, Christ has given his very life for you. So that no matter what the day holds, no matter if your alarm clock doesn't go off, your relationship with your family and friends goes from bad to worse, no matter what happens in this life, his grace is sufficient for you. Turn away those false gods and those idols come back to him and cling to him. Believe in his words that he has died for you and your anxious and troubled hearts. He has given you a certain victory. He has redeemed you from your sins. He has made you an heir of eternal life. 
He cares about you, all of you, body and soul. You are his beloved child. You are his. And you will have him always. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you for joining us for Chapel. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about short and long-term opportunities to serve, visit servenow.lcms.org.